There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the recent discoveries of elements when it comes to transuranic elements. In this video, we'll kind of cover the next stop point, which says use available evidence to analyze benefits and problems associated with the use of radioactive isotopes in identified industries and medicines. So in this case, we have to analyze, so we have to have a quite close examination of the benefits and problems associated with the use of isotopes in identified industries and medicine. Um, so first I'll cover some of the benefits and problems and talk about what kind of industries they get used in. So for example, the detection of disease is one big benefit. So this is a benefit. And the reason why this is a benefit is because we can use these radioisotopes to trace to uh, organs, so go through organs. So these here are some of the scans we get for using radioisotopes. So these scans here are enabled by using radioisotopes. And that's obviously a really beneficial part for detection of cancers or any other problems with organs. We also have the dating of fossils. Again, this is a benefit or beneficial use of radioisotopes. And what I mean by this is, you know, we before we found uh, radioisotopes, so for example, this is car carbon-14, which is a radioisotope. And carbon-14 gets used to find out how old the fossil is. So before we had this radioisotope dating, we, we didn't know how old fossils were. We might have found some fossils, but we didn't know if they were 1,000 years, 10,000, or 5,000 years old, or if they just died. Whereas this radioisotope dating allowed us to get a good estimate of how old they actually were. And we also have other types of dating, for example, uranium dating and other, a couple other ones. And combined, they allow us to actually estimate the age of the Earth, the age of different fossils. So for, for paleontology, which was the um, study of fossils, this new radioisotope dating allowed us to really get a good idea of how old they actually were, which was obviously which is an essential part for their job. So this dating of fossils is another really good benefit of using radioisotopes. In tracing, this is often used for research. We can use tracing to find out if we have problems in our organs, but we can also just use tracing because these things obviously give out, give out photons so we can know where they are in our body. We can use that tracing to just find out what happens in our body in general, not only for disease, but just generally what happens in our body because we can follow around radioisotopes in our body so we know what happens. That's tracing, and that's used in research quite a bit, quite important as well. And then also detection of leaks in pipes. So if this is for generally any industry that which has lots of leaks in pipes, and even for home pipes as well. Because what you can imagine, if this were here, our pipes, if there were holes in it, small holes in it here, we might be able to see those holes because we can actually look at it. But anything which is you know, underground or in the roof, if there's a leak, it's harder to see because we can't see of our naked eye. Whereas these radioisotopes, if they, if they flow through the tube and there's a, actually a hole somewhere, then they will actually leave. And because we have, because they emit photons, we can see that through a scanner. So if they actually go through these holes, they leave through these holes, we can see that for that scanner. That's how we can detect leaks in pipes. So that's not a beneficial use of radioisotopes in the industry. It helps us detect leaks in pipes, which we could otherwise not see. Now, these are some of the benefits in medicine and, and in industry, but also some problems as well. And many of the main problems come with the health consequences of radiation. So the problems were, for example, that radiation is bad for health. So what I have done here is you can imagine this ray here to be gamma radiation. And what gamma radiation actually does is if there's to or beta or alpha, but gamma is the main problem for us. Gamma radiation, if it hits our cell, so we have our cell here. If it's a cell, it can actually break our DNA. So this is our DNA can break it, and that breaking of the DNA can cause cancer. So one cell gets cancer after a while. We have a tumor. So that's how we can go from being fine if we're exposed to too much radiation, going from being fine to having cancer. That is a problem in general when we use any radioisotope, even the ones which are generally not that harmful can still be some somewhat harmful. So we try to minimize radiation problems when it comes to radioisotopes, but we can't make them to zero. We can't reduce them to zero. There always will be some problems. Then we have nuclear waste as well. 
it's not like other waste we, we can just throw out into the garbage bin and they'll get removed because it takes so these this is nuclear waste right here and the problem with nuclear waste is it has a really long so anything which is radioactive especially something like uranium or plutonium has a very long half-life and what I mean by that is it will take sometimes years or even longer to decay, in many cases more than years, which means it will constantly emit radiation and we don't want to have that around us. We can't throw that in the garbage bin because then everyone dealing with the garbage will be full of radiation. So we actually, what we do is we put it in containers. These are our waste containers here. And then we usually dump them. So we dump them in the sea because we know they're going to be there for a long time. So we want to have them as far away as possible. So we dump them in the sea. But obviously, if there's leaks in these containers, that could cause radiation for um, all the marine life and, and eventually us as well. So it's not perfect because we have to dump these radiation, this waste, wasteful radiation. And that can cause problems for us in the future as well. So that's one of the big complaints about anything about nuclear chemistry or nuclear um, uses of nuclear radioisotopes or nuclear energy is that we produce this nuclear waste, which is hard to remove. And obviously another one would be nuclear meltdown. This is obviously a small chance, so it's not much of a chance that this actually happens. But it's still scary, the idea that you know you might have one of these nuclear reactors that breaks down. And once it breaks down, there could be a release of lots of radiation. And then these cancer problems rise up again. So these were some of the problems associated with using radioisotopes. But there are also lots of benefits. So benefits were, for example, to help with detection of disease, with dating of fossils being able to trace things in our body, which helps with research, and being able to take leaks in pipes. Um, actually, I wrote leaks and pipes, leaks in pipes. Uh, but yeah, some of the problems were that radiation is bad for health, which because it can actually cause cancer, for example. We have nuclear waste, which does not go away for long periods of time, so we have to dump it somewhere, which can overall still come back to haunt us as well. And then we have the, the threat, of nuclear meltdown, which means that we might have one of the nuclear reactors explode. Small chance of it, but it's still very scary if it does happen. But yeah, these were some of the problems and benefits associated with the use of radioisotopes. And I would say overall, the benefits still outweigh the um, problems. Thank you for watching.